it's a big story that's that you see on the wall there. I'm really grateful for for my niece Darlene Gate, my cousin Butch Dick, and all the youth that took part in painting those pictures. Because it's a beginning. The project really began at the time when the Harbor Authority was formed. Uh, one of the commitments that was made at that time was that we would work with the nations to find economic development opportunities and awareness uh, opportunities for the, um, the Coast Salish people uh, and the history of the Coast Salish people within the Victoria Harbor. We started talking about, well, what could we do uh, to involve youth and to create awareness and arts in the community. So when you're looking at artwork, you can just about tell what nation they're from. And later on, when you get really good at it, you can tell even what artist made them. If you have the curved, straight line joined together by two curved lines. Straight, curved line joined together by two curved lines. So just practice those for a few minutes. We met at some gathering. He said, well, what do you think of this idea? And I said, yeah, it sounds like a good idea. And he said, would you be willing to be a part of it? And, and of course, I'm the only artist on the band, so <laughs> he said he wanted to talk geese and his climate involved. I said, well, if we could make it happen, that'd be good, but, you know, there's all the logistics that we have to think of, of actually producing a mural on, on cement blocks and all, you know, all the complications. And Butch went back to the Songhees uh, with the idea, and then we approached Chief Andy Thomas about uh, the en engagement of the Esquimalt. And Chief Thomas recommended that we talk to Darling Gate. Okay, I'm going to pass a piece of paper out. Does everyone feel like they're in the zone, kind of, to come up with an idea? I feel nervous. Do you? Yeah. Okay, so um, you don't need to come up with it right away, but what you can do is sketch on another piece of paper and when you're ready you can start on this one. So maybe what I'll do is I'll get some paper. Growing up, I didn't really learn much about my culture through the city of Victoria. I mean, you could walk through the city of Victoria as a tourist and know nothing about our people and never learn anything about our people and die not knowing anything about our people. And that's been happening for generations. And I felt, for the last 15 years, I felt this sense of yearning that I need to be involved in a project that's going to bring the knowledge of our people to the surface so people will know that we're not extinct. So then they came up with this idea that Butch would paint the sea creatures and uh, Darlene would do the, uh, the land creatures and they would wave it back and forth between the, the two. Uh, we started talking about the challenges of, of how do you have these youth actually paint uh, a mural onto the wall. As artists, we're not going to hang over the breakwater and, yeah. and, um, and paint on the breakwater, so all those things had to be discussed and all the safety issues. Initially, we looked at doing the outside uh, breakwater wall because we felt it would be safer for the youth, and we are envisioning at a time actually painting on the wall. So we decided, well, we need a coordinator, so that's when Dean came along, and Dean took on the role of coordinating the youth and hiring the youth and, and working with the logistics of the project. I think what we'll do, we'll put it over here. How it was going to be done still hadn't been figured out. Like, were we going to paint on the actual concrete, and were we going to project from some distance away the, project the images onto the wall, sketch them on and paint them. We'd have to do that in the evening. And then the, the risks of painting over rocks and a 12-foot drop. There, everybody's going to have to be strapped into harnesses and so forth. So we realized if we just do it on panels, the youth are safe. We can do it in the shop and, and then we can just figure out a way to, to paint those and then mount them onto the breakwater. So now we could focus on the artwork itself and preparing, preparing the panels. There are 100 panels and there are 20 designs and we've done three and we're starting the fourth. Yeah, I feel like we accomplished a lot. 
compared to like the first week that we were here, like it took us a while to <laughs> finish one design, but now we've really got four or five of them going at once. It's lots of fun. It's always challenging because there's a new picture with um, difficult lines or difficult shapes, which you need to do. We were able to build our projection room basically where we could hold the panels completely flat against the wall which was important for projecting and sketching the images mm -hmm. correctly and then being able to line up the panels in a way that we could paint the lines correctly. I'm Bonnie Quaite and I'm from Victoria from the Songhees Nation um, but my father is French and Irish. I would describe it as First Nations art that represents our people and our connections to the land and the sea and that we never want to forget that. I guess it makes me feel more ready to be able to have a job in that area on my own too. Like once I've had this experience, maybe I'll have the confidence to start projects, you yeah. know, get a group of youth together and start different projects. Yeah. So I think that it is really motivating and empowering for all of us here. And now that I've learned some of the paint brushes from here, like I learned how to use them. Like watching Bonnie do gradient is sort of helps me learn. So I feel like I've gained a lot from doing this. And I'm very thankful. Yeah, I'm also like really grateful to be working on this project, like being able to come here and like be around people and like paint. <laughs> it's like my two favorite things, like people and art. Like. We only had about a three-week window for hiring people, and we got about a, almost a hundred applications. Just from knowing these kids for the short time that I've known them, which is two or three weeks, mm -hmm. I can say that I've seen changes in them already. Mm -hmm. Like, you see their confidence level changing when they're working on the mural. They're so excited and driven to do it. Mm -hmm. um, you see that. They're, they're understanding that this is bigger than, than just who they are. Mm -hmm. like they're doing it for a bigger purpose, mm -hmm. which is rare these days to see kids or young people who even care about those things, but they do. They care so much and so deeply because they're already um, thinking about becoming artists, a lot of them. I'm more interested in art now. Uh, I felt at first that I couldn't do it, but like once I got here and I noticed how everybody was doing it, I was like, oh, it's okay, we can accomplish this. It's not really that hard as I thought it would be. I'd like to paint more, I think, and keep learning too now. It's really grounding to be able to paint and do something for the community. So. I still learn, you know, and I learn from young people, and I learn you know, from their energies and their spirit, that sort of thing, you know, it's sort of watching them, and, and sometimes they come up with some really neat new concepts, and I say, well, I never thought of that, you know, that's good. I think if we incorporated the animals, um, well, it would be okay, like, if it wasn't just an animal here in front of the tree, another animal in front of the tree, another animal in front of the tree, like, they could be kind of, yeah. Mm -hmm. They all totally respect what we're doing and they completely understand, because that's all I do is talk about it when I'm with these kids, who are wonderful, by the way, I just love each and every one of them, like, just love them. Yeah. Um, it was really nice working with her and, like, getting to know her, too. She's a really cool person, um, and yeah, she, like, taught us how to do the gradient. You start with your green and you kind of pull it up almost in like a crisscross motion and then eventually just blend it in. One or two of the youth that were not First Nations but, but were exceptional artists and we wanted to, to bridge the, uh, the relationship between First Nations and uh, the other cultures in Victoria. I think it's going to be really cool once they get up there and they can be like, look what we've been working on so far, like it's really great. We still have more to come. Well, the finished mural, I think that it would be a new attraction that, uh, that would be of regional interest and national interest. It would be a story of the Coast Salish people in the Victoria area, and it would uh, extend from its current beginning to right to the 1.1 kilometers to the end of the breakwater. I can see this going through to the very end. I can see that on legends that have been forgotten about, revived over the years. I can see a lot of our tribes loosening up and saying, okay, let's let them learn about this one. Mm -hmm. Because right now, our first peoples are very protective over our legends. But I think they're seeing the importance of allowing people to learn about it. I mean, I walk into any store, 
I walk into any bookstore, I look in the archives, there's no information on our people. It's like we've just disappeared. I mean, we're, we're writing our own book for the whole world to see. And that, you can't, it doesn't get much better than that.